Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the tutorial on Dockerizing a Project. And in this video, we are going to get very hands-on because we are going to take an existing code base and we're going to make it work with Docker. So in this video, we are going to quickly talk about what Docker is and why you would want to use it. We are going to look at installing Docker locally on your computer. We are going to look at a test project that I have set up. It's right here on GitHub. It is a basic Node.js API server. It's basically the bare minimum amount of code you would need to get an API server working in Node.js. So we're going to review that really quickly and make sure that it works. And then we are going to look into Dockerizing that project. So there are a few steps that we need to perform to get it working with Docker. We're going to go over that in this section right here. I recommend you do it together with me in this video. And then afterward, you can try doing this yourself on your own computer. And we're going to be doing that on this Ubuntu 20 virtual machine that I have set up right here. And then we are going to have this quick conclusion section. So if you need to get to this web page to try to get to this command yourself, or if you need to get to the GitHub repo, there will be links below this video. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button to this YouTube channel. Thanks. So dockerizing a project. Docker is basically a tool for containerizing your project so that it can run in isolation. And the way to think about it is you've got some code base and it's running on some computer, right? Some operating system. Docker just provides you a tool so that you've got this lightweight container that is built just to run your own little code base and it can live by itself. And the reason you would want to do this is because it avoids installing unnecessary libraries or CLI tools on your computer. You know, all the tools and libraries that you need are going to live right inside that Docker container and not necessarily on your computer. And so it's easier to work with other people. And so you'll see for the Node.js project we're working with, I don't even have no Node installed in this virtual machine or NPM installed on this machine. And we're still going to be able to run the project on our computer because it's all going to be done inside of the Docker container. Node and NPM are going to be running in the Docker container. And so we don't need it on our computer. Really big benefit and super easy to work with when you need to work with multiple other developers. So so big companies always use Docker, or they try to. They should try to, at least in 2020. So another reason is Docker avoids version mismatches. So your computer might have some version 2 of a library, but the project uses version 3. Normally, this would be an issue, but because the library is going to be inside of that Docker container, it doesn't really matter. Then it's easier to run CI steps like billing or testing. This is really important for CI in GitHub, you know, for PR review and stuff like that. Docker makes it really easy. Then deployment is also easy, especially for backend servers. You know, you've got this lightweight container that's running your project, and so it's easy to ship it out to wherever you need to host your code base in. That's especially true for backend API servers. And then finally, Docker allows for more complex projects with multiple systems. So for example, if you've got multiple third-party dependencies that you sort of need to mock on your own computer, it would be kind of hard. Like if you're running some database like MySQL or Postgres, or something even more complex like Redis or something special like Elasticsearch. Hosting those on your own computer and making it work locally would normally take a lot of time, especially for every single developer having to configure their computer that way. But if you've got Docker, you know, you can just have a Docker container running a Postgres instance, and so you can kind of connect your API server to that Docker instance that has the database, and so it's really easy to work with. We'll be seeing that in a future blog post video. So that's why you would want to use Docker. It's actually really important. So how do you actually install Docker? Well, there are quite a few ways to install Docker, and it really depends on your operating system, especially I know Mac, there's some desktop tool that would be easy to use. So for Ubuntu Linux, Ubuntu 20 at least, you can do sudo app install docker.io. I've already done this, so it's already installed. And the way you would test your installation is doing docker run hello world. Really simple. And if you run this command, you'll see hello from Docker. Really easy. Let's clear this out. Docker is running on our Ubuntu virtual machine. And remember, no, it isn't. Just a fun little fact. So we've got Docker installed on our own computer. You should follow some Google guide to do that if you don't already have it running. But we want to look at Dockerizing a project. So let's say that we have this test project set up. It is right here on GitHub if you want to get to it yourself. But I've got it cloned locally in my Windows 10 computer right now. So this project is really simple, git ignore file, license, package, .json file, which basically for Node.js determines what, our, um, what libraries we need. Then we've got a readme and this server.js file has everything that we need. So if we look at the server.js file, we just import this express library. We invoke it with this express parentheses. We set up one root to this slash endpoint, and that's going to return status of 200. And it's going to return some JSON that says status OK. 
and this server is going to be running on port 3000 and then we are just going to start the server and our console is going to say express server listening on port and it's going to be 3000. So this is a really simple server. If we look at the deployment instructions in this readme, we have to have node and npm installed locally. So I actually do have node and npm installed on this Windows 10 computer. So we are good with that. Next, we need to do an npm install in our terminal. So that is just going to get our node modules working. Remember, our project needs this express thing, and technically it's going to install body parser, even though we don't need it. And that's going to create this node modules folder. This is our external library. That's just part of our build step. And finally, how do we get the server running? Well, we do this node server.js command that you can't really see. Actually, I can make this a little wider so you can see it. And we see express server listening on port 3000, so that's all good. And yeah, so that's our server working. And how do we know that it's working? Well, we can go to localhost 3000 and we'll see our status, okay, returned from this slash endpoint. So that's our node server, really basic code base. We want to dockerize it. And we can go to our Ubuntu 20 virtual machine and that's what we're going to do right now. So if we try to get this working on our Ubuntu 20 virtual machine, and we're going to have to do that right now, I'm going to follow this command completely with you because I don't even have the repository cloned locally. So I clone the repository, let's cd into it, and if we try to do this npm install, it's not going to work because we don't have npm installed on our host computer right now, which is this Ubuntu 20 virtual machine. So um, this is why we would want to use Docker because I, I don't need to have npm installed to have the project working if we use Docker properly. So now we're on the section of dockerizing the project. Here's what we're going to do. We need to create something called a Docker file. So create the file called docker file. If you ls, you'll see that it was created. Sorry, this text is a little bit hard to see. So I'll make it a little bigger for you. So we've got that. Oh, this is like super big, but that's fine. So you can see we created this thing called a docker file. And there are a few things that we need to put in this docker file. I'm going to ignore this section right here. You can read it if you want. But I'm going to edit the docker file directly and just paste the stuff in and explain it to you since we're talking in this video. It'll be a little more nice to explain it this way. So the first line is this. Can we make this bigger too? No, we can't. So this first line is this from node 14. Basically, our Docker container is running some sort of operating system that our code base is going to be running on top of. And so we don't want to have to make our own operating system every single time we want to make some when we want to dockerize some project. So some nice people on this thing called Docker Hub have already prepared some base Docker images that we can derive from that have some operating system with some stuff installed in it that we need. And in particular, some people who like Node.js have prepared a Linux operating system with Node version 14 installed, and that's basically what we're going to be importing as our base operating system that our code base is going to be running on top of. So when you see this note from Node 14 line right here, this is going to be looking at this Docker Hub website, and some people have set up the base operating system that we're going to be using and running our code on top of. And we found it right here. So anytime you need to find some base operating system, you go to Docker Hub and find it. Or you can create your own if that's what you want to do. Next, we see this working directory slash user slash source slash server. So remember, our Docker container is a copy of some operating system, and we need to be running our code base inside of it. And so what this is saying is inside of this Linux operating system, we are going to be working inside of this folder. That, that's where we're going to be working with. And then we are going to copy our code base into this folder. That's what this copy line means. And then we are going to, now that we've got our code base inside of the Docker container, we need to actually run some commands to get the project working properly. So what we needed to do was we need to run npm install. This is basically, this run command is basically going to say, okay, in a terminal inside of this directory, inside of this folder, do the npm install command. And that's going to be, that's going to generate this node modules folder that we had generated before. Then we are going to expose port 3000. That's what this line means. So remember, we are running an API server that is listening for connections on port 3000, but that's inside of a Docker container. So that Docker container is okay for having port 3000 
you know, running the server. But external connections from our computer cannot go inside of the Docker container just magically. Docker is kind of closed off. So what this is saying is this Docker container is going to expose port 3000 so that our host computer's port can go inside of its the Docker containers port 3000, send our request to that server that's going to be listening on port 3000, and then send it outside of the port 3000. So this is just saying the Docker containers port 3000 is exposed to the outside world. And then finally, we need to run the server with the node server.js command, same as before. This is the syntax for doing that. I tried to keep this Docker file as simple as possible just to make sure that we can Dockerize the, proper, the project properly. So that's all good. Let's make sure that we save that properly. Yes, it's all there. And that's creating the Docker file. So technically, we just Dockerize the project. And we'll see the commands that we need to make it work in a second. But there's one other nice thing that we can do that I will touch upon. And that is creating a Docker ignore file. So just like a git ignore file, there's something called a Docker ignore file, which is basically We've got this code base and it's got all of these files in it, but some of these files are not required to actually build our project. So for example, this readme isn't required. That's not really part of the code base. This license, don't need it to run our server. Git ignore file, don't need it. And then interestingly enough, this node modules file, we don't want to copy it over because maybe we have it installed locally like we do in this Windows 10 instance, but we don't want that copied into the Docker container because every single time we build a new project, we want it to get that node modules folder from scratch. We don't want it to be copying anything over. So we don't want that to be included. Well, that's what a Docker ignore file would do. And so we are going to create that and we're going to edit it. And we are just going to put this stuff inside of it. So it's just basically the files and folders that we don't want to be copied over. That's simply what it is. And so now we have our do project dockerized. We've got a Docker file. We've got a Docker ignore file. That's basically the nice minimum amount of stuff that we need. And so now that let, let's just make sure we don't have any images running. The only images we have is this node 14 that I had from earlier and this hello world that we ran before. So we want to build our Docker image. We've got this code base running here locally, not running locally. We've got this code base locally. And from that code base, we want to generate a Docker image, which is going to be a representation of our container. And so we run this command right here. And basically what this command says is Docker build. And we are going to tag this image with the name node min server. That's what the image is going to be named. You see that we didn't have it there before. And where are we building from? Well, we're going to be building from the this folder right here that had this stuff inside of it. And this step took a little bit quickly for me because I already had I already had this node 14 base Docker image installed. If I didn't have this installed, then um, the Docker build would pull it down and that would take a little bit of time because you're kind of pulling and building an entire operating system for that Docker container. But this was really quick because I already had it. So subsequent Docker builds would have this if you already do it, which makes Docker builds really quick once you do it the first time. So we did sudo Docker images and we see our node mint server Docker image was built. And now that we have it built, we want to do this run command. So we have this code base. We built it with Docker. We've got this Docker image running that represents our container. And now we want to run that container. So I'm going to run this command, and then I'm going to explain it. sudo docker run. And then we are saying our computer's port 8000 is going to point into the Docker container's point 3000. It would be perfectly acceptable to have our computer's port 3000 mapped to 3000. But I just wanted to make it super clear of what was going on. So I chose different ports. And then what we are going to run is the container that was tagged as node mint server. So this is what we're going to be running. Really simple command. And now that we have that running, you can see that this worked properly. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to localhost 8000. Because remember, this Docker container is running on our port 8000. And that is going to poke inside of the Docker containers port 3000 for all our requests. So if we go to the root of localhost 8000, we expect status OK. It looks a little different because we are in Firefox. But basically, what this means is a Docker container is running. We went to slash on port 8000. It went inside of the Docker containers port 3000, where our 
Node.js API server is working and our Node.js API server processed that with our code and it returned that status 200 okay that we were expecting our code base to do. And so that was it. That was dockerizing the project. It's really simple. So just to recap, let's go back over here. Just to recap, scroll down. Dockerization of a project is really simple and it has all those benefits we mentioned before. It's really useful when working with multiple people, when setting up CI CD, or when working with complex projects locally. And all it takes to dockerize a project really simply is you can create that Docker file. I made a really simple Docker file in this tutorial to make sure that we could get it working. But there are certain tricks you can do to cache and make it work a little better. Stuff like multi-stage builds. Um, we won't worry about that. Maybe we'll see it in future videos. And all you have to do is use a few commands to make it work locally. So we have this code base. We don't even have Node.js installed on our Ubuntu 20 machine, but we can run the Node.js project, the code base, because it's running inside of that Docker container, which is really nice, obviously. And in future blog posts, what we're going to do do is we are going to look at these um, multi-stage builds and these complex projects by using Docker Compose, which helps create those complex local systems. We're probably going to make an API server that requires a database, and so we're, we're going to have Docker Compose running that locally on our computer. And then we're also going to be doing a tutorial on C Circle CI and making sure that we can use Docker with that will really help with the Circle CI steps. Um, and we're going to see how that works in GitHub to make a CI and GitHub to make sure that, you know, if you've got someone submitting a PR, you want it to build a project in Circle CI and then have it test. And having that work with Docker is really nice. And so that's Dockerizing a Project. I'm Source Make. If you like this video, please like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, follow on Twitter and other social medias. If you want to see something else, please leave a comment for that. And good luck Dockerizing your future projects. It's really important in 2020, especially in professional workplaces. So good luck, and I hope this helped.